Hi, my name is Tom Dongeli. I'm the Director of Operations here at WISER, and thank you for taking the time to view this WISER Minute. Today, I want to talk to you about in situ simulation. In situ simulation can be an effective tool for monitoring clinical performance, system responses, and or teaching within a clinical setting. I'd like to now share with you some tips about creating and running an effective in situ simulation program. Here are some helpful hints to help you set up and run an in situ event. First, talk with the clinical coordinator. Is there anything specific that they would like to assess? Are they warning their staff that you're coming or is it a surprise? When the event is over, do you owe them any kind of information or any kind of data from the event? Second, you should preview the location of the event prior to running it. Make sure you have access to electrical outlets. Choose a location where simulation will take place. Review the site for any logistical constraints, like size of room, or can the participants all fit in a location, or is it close to a public area or families? Third, now that your site is chosen, you should get your equipment ready. First, you should consider how to plan on transporting your equipment to the site. An EMS stretcher is a great way to transport your simulator and equipment. It can be collapsed and it is lightweight. Second, consider placing your simulator on a backboard. It will make it easier for you to move the simulator back and forth and in and out of vehicles and to and from possible locations. The third part about having an EMS stretcher is you can put supplemental material on the stretcher as well. Using the straps from an EMS stretcher makes a secure way to transport your equipment. So what equipment should you bring? In addition to the simulator and its accompanying hardware, you should think about including the following. An extension cord, a power strip, a laptop charger, a stand for you to run the laptop and the simulator software from. Don't forget your program scenarios for the event and make sure they're loaded on your computers if you're using a simulator. The last thing you should think about bringing is extra supplies. These are supplies that may be useful during the event or most likely to break on any of the equipment that you may be using. The last thing you should consider for equipment is the clinical equipment. Are you using the clinical equipment that's at the site or is the site expecting you to supply all the clinical equipment? The last thing you need to do before you leave your facility and go on your in situ journey is to test your equipment. So prior to leaving for your in situ event, you should set up your equipment and conduct a mock run of the event in the hallway of your facility. Doing this in an area like the hallway will assure that you're prepared to function independently. Test your equipment functionality and also test the accuracy of your scenarios that you'll be running. Now that you're ready to go on site, once you've transported the equipment and you're there and you're set up, there are a few administrative issues that you may need to attend prior to actually running the event. If you're in a public area, you may need to notify any bystanders that an event is occurring and that it's being used for training purposes. If you don't do this, it may be a bit disturbing for the lay public to see. If you're conducting a mock code and there are a real code called recently, then you may want to consider delaying the event until a real code is resolved. Thank you for taking the time to view this Wiser Minute. I hope you found the information about in situ simulation valuable and we look forward to seeing you again soon.